Hey everyone, thanks for joining me again for another fish room tour. I'm really excited to show you guys what I got going on in here. Uh, I've been working really hard with the little time I do have um, to bring some new species to the website and really uh, play around with some new, new fish and just enjoy my time down here. So I want to share what I got going on with you guys and I hope it's interesting. And one of the first things that you might notice in this fish room is there's a big honking pond in the middle of it now. So I'm sorry I didn't make a video about this. It's actually pretty self-explanatory. You got a 100 gallon tote with a couple cinder blocks. Got some dwarf water lettuce, uh, one rogue water hyacinth, uh, a couple bunches of java fern. There's another one over here. Those were outside. They were growing really nice out there actually. My lily pad was getting kind of uh, out-competed. There's a little bit of lily pad left. I don't know if it's gonna pop back out. I, I threw a root tab in it, we'll see what happens. There's like a tiger lotus in the middle, uh, some guppy grass, some water sprite, some Ludwigia, um, cardinalis, something like that for this. And um, this is just gonna be a giant mutt guppy pond. Um, it's cold water, there's no heater in it. Right now we're at like uh, 73 degrees. Wow, they're all nibbling my finger. <laughs> a bunch of just water sprite and wandering dude I'm also gonna do shrimp in here putting my white cloud mountain minnows in here too really want to get into rice fish I know rice fish would do well in a cold water pond uh, as you can see it's brand new because it's like there's not a hint of algae in here yet I think it's gonna be really fun I really think I'm gonna enjoy this tank quite a bit I've dewormed these guppies like three times and I treated them with salt and I think they're all super duper healthy because the last thing you want to do is put unhealthy fish in a big container like this and then you're trying to medicate 100 gallons. That's not fun. This 40 gallon on my two 40 gallon rack has been updated. It used to be just a grow out tank for angelfish and I'm slowly going to start transitioning the whole fish room into more of a natural look. Um, so just a nice sand substrate with a little bit of uh, aqua soil underneath the back end and what I got in here are some Gary Lang Melitania parva so sometimes they're referred to as like the sunset rainbow fish um, really really awesome looking fish when they start firing up they get even oranger than this like and these are pretty small still um, really happy with the group I got so I've got about a group of 10 parva in here, and then I have some brand new Corydoras, Venezuelan Corydoras. They are the most orange Corys I've ever seen. I uh, got them from Dan's Fish. I think they are hobbyist bred by a guy, a guy named Rick. <clears throat> and they are just super orange. I cannot wait to breed those. We decided to just make this a community rainbow fish tank where I'm going to keep at least three of each of my um, species of rainbow in here in case there was some kind of disaster where a tank crashed or something this would be like another backup um, plus I mean rainbow fish I wish they were more popular they're like Pokemon like they're just so different you know they're like look you can just collect them all here's a nice Blairi there's my Trifasciata um, Blythe River. These guys are awesome. These guys are so cool. They're not fired up right now because it's late. There's my Myrisai. Oh, by the way, um, I have Myrisai and Blairi Trio still available on the website. I only have a couple left, so if you're interested in getting a breeding um, trio of these, that's how big they are. They're actually, I mean, they're they're over two inches, or two two and a half maybe. Nice and chunky and um, ready to breed, throwing tons of eggs, I'm sure. And I've got a Bozmani. Um, this guy, I believe, has Popeye. His eyes are kind of popping out, so I put him in here to treat that. And, ooh, let's see that nice little yawn. So we're just trying to treat him, but I'm gonna put some more Bozmani in here from the 90 gallon. Also, I gotta get my Cali Moises in here and my Red Nacentra Snapper Creeks, but uh, yeah, this is gonna be a fun tank. Um, I just updated the website to uh, a new shipping um, algorithm that actually does the math so that you get overnight shipping and it only charges you exactly what it's going to cost. 
Uh, before I didn't know how to do that, so I just had it set to fifty dollars, you know, flat rate. Now it's like, you know, like someone ordered from Indiana yesterday, or a couple days ago. It charged them seventeen dollars for overnight shipping, which I was like, uh oh, like that that seems way too little. Uh, I plugged it in, and sure enough, it was exactly seventeen dollars. So yeah, I'm eating the cost of the pro, uh, the box, the insulation, the heat packs, all that stuff. But honestly, I don't care. It's it's a nicer way to ship because you're still getting that high quality overnight shipping, which I think the fish deserve, and uh, you're not breaking the bank doing it. So really, really excited to offer that on the website. Um, if you're curious what shipping is going to be, just act like you're going to check out, and it should give you a pretty good idea. These fish are just magnificent. Actually, the Trifasciata, if you guys are interested in those, I have a bunch of fry. I'll probably be listing those again on the website, but they are pretty small right now. I've been giving my rainbows a lot of uh, frozen foods. I treat them to bloodworms once in a while, too. I haven't noticed any problems with bloat or anything like that. I mean, they absolutely go nuts for them. And uh, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like the color in the rainbows is a lot better. Uh, the higher quality food that they get. Like if I'm giving them lots of brine shrimp and blood worms and just high quality flake food, I feel like they really show me a lot of really nice colors. This bottom 40 gallon is a really fun tank too because in the top of the water column we've got my L Tiger Endlers. And on the bottom, we've got my Trilineatus Corridoras, which is like the false Julie. So, keeping them at about 80 degrees, I think, which is a little on the warmer side, but I'm trying to get the 333s to, to spawn. And from what I understand, at least from what I read, they need really, really clean water to, to breed. So, I don't know if this tank's going to work out for them, because there's a lot going on. But, you know, we'll leave them in there. I've seen them try to trap each other once, so... I'm new at, you know, this hobby in general, but especially breeding plecos. I've only bred one pleco before, so I don't know what the heck. Um, been having really, well, what I consider really, really good success with these Corydoras. I've been getting literally at least 100 eggs every week that I can collect and uh, hatch out. I see they're kind of shy, but they're, there's probably... I don't know how many quays are in here. <laughs> I haven't counted them in a while. Probably at least 40. 40 Corydoras. So you got some itty bitties. You got some big mamas. You got some teenagers. King tigers are like, turn the light off, we want to come out. Yeah, like look at these little guys. Tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny little guy. Whoa. And then, you know, I've got like this, this uh, breeder box, these little guys in it. Oh yeah, and I got a bunch of eggs out of this tank earlier. Sadly, I just don't have enough time to collect all the eggs. But uh, all I'm doing to breed these guys, I'm just power feeding them, like tons of blood worms, rapashi, um, and this really high quality new food that I've been using from Ebo. Uh, insect soft gram, they really like. I give muscle sticks to the 333s. Yeah, they just, they love this stuff. So I, I power feed them all this. And then I just do a cold water change, um, you know, randomly. I, I try to sync it up when it's raining outside or there's a cold front moving in. And then you come down the next day and there is just hundreds of eggs. Um, or at least a hundred eggs in this moss. Uh, they they just they just lay them everywhere. See, I can see some eggs right now. So, so many eggs that I don't have time to collect them all, <laughs> which I guess is a good problem. We've got more quarries. These are all quarries in here. Should be a decent amount of quarries in the fry box system. I think the yeah these are all quarries in here. There's one. Uh, a gentleman commented on one of my videos and said just throw some ram's horn snails in the fry box. I did that 
What a great comment that was. I don't ever have to vacuum these uh, these uh, boxes out anymore. These ram's horn snails are literally eating all the detritus. Oh, yeah, check this out. These are all little quarries in here. I have a pretty strong light on this. It's like a LED shop light. But I actually like the uh, algae that it creates. I feel like the fish can, you know, chew on that all day. Look at all those quarries. So yeah, no shortage of uh, Corydoras trilineatus. Be looking uh, for them on the website. I'll probably add them tonight, actually, because I got a few that I could sell. Oh, and um, my wife and I call the CPDs sticks because they literally look like sticks. Look how many fry are in here. These are the Celestial Pearl Danios. I mean, they're like little sticks with eyes. But uh, I've got a really stellar line of CPDs, honestly. I'm pretty proud of them. Uh, I think they're... I mean, I don't know how they get much better, but they're just, they're just gorgeous. Because I've seen them in the pet stores, and sometimes they don't really look that great. But I seem to have a pretty decent line of them. And people are always really happy with... Uh, the quality of the CPDs that we have. I think we have 10 more for sale and then, you know, then we gotta start bulking our numbers up again. But yeah, just a ton of sticks in here. There's a Blair Eye River Tank. Um, looking kind of ratchet right now, tons of snails. Some janky pieces I was uh, using to keep the lid on fell into the tank, so it looks kind of bad right now. But we don't really care about the tank so much. We wanna, we wanna look at the fish. And these guys are the ones that I have for sale. So pretty decent size, honestly. Probably about inch and a half to two inches. Awesome color. And um, just really, really cool behavior. When they are sparring and breeding, man, that breeding stripe on the top of their head turns like, it flashes like this crazy gold color. You can see it from across the room. Look at these guys. They've grown pretty fast, actually. Well, I got this 55 gallon tank for free from someone in the neighborhood. And it was originally going to be the tank that I set up at the local grade school until I broke it. <laughs> I was uh, dumping some aqua soil in and I leaned the aqua soil up against this plastic piece that, that holds the two uh, the front and the back together and it snapped so now I've got some janky wood clamps holding the front and back together because it this tank was bowing way out um, to the point where I wasn't comfortable filling it with water because uh, I just didn't know what was gonna happen but uh, I've just got some extra you know odds and ends in here this is really just a utility tank to hold some extra fish until I'm ready to breed them again there's one of the Myrosai trios. There's one of the males. God, I, lo I love that rainbow. Those are those are the coolest rainbow. Um, some extra pearl gouramis. Some extra Philippine blue I'm breeding out for my F1s. So this guy, he was my one of my originals I bred. He's looking really really nice. Um, the first fish I ever raised from eggs were these angelfish right here. It's my first batch of angels. And they are getting absolutely massive. Like this guy down here is a tank. I didn't even know I had this guy in here. He's looking, ooh, he's looking really good. Dang, look at the blue on him. I just love watching them eat, man. This is so much fun. This 29 gallon is a breeding tank for reticulated hillstream loaches. I have seven of them in here. Just kind of power feeding them. Obviously, I didn't have to create a river style like <laughs> biotope for them, but I just think it's fun. I, I just I enjoy making natural tanks like this. Um, it's probably more for me than them, but. I've been looking, I've been checking the substrate every day, and I haven't seen any fry yet. 
So I don't know if they're breeding in here yet, but I've been giving them lots of brine shrimp, rapashi, and blood worms. Probably gonna throw some cherry shrimp in here too, just because why not? And I threw some rainbow fish mops in here just because it'd be a complete waste of tank space not to at least hatch out some rainbows. We got some fry in here. Not many. The longer I've kept these, the more I realize that they're, they, they should be on everyone's list. They're just really cool. Kind of an oddball fish, but very, very uh, rewarding to keep. Very fun to watch. And I haven't fed this tank, so I don't see any of them right now, but usually they're all out flying around. All right, now we'll take a look at this rack. Just a couple Philippine Blue Angels. Um, they're like the last two I have left. And then this guy's ventral fin's a little bent, so I didn't want to saddle him either. So they're just chilling in there. Got some um, rose line barbs in here that uh, we just bought at this swap. And um, quarantining them right now. My wife has been wanting these forever. I want to find a big group of them, but two is all they had left. So I'll have to just keep adding to the group. But they get like this really, really nice coloration to them. I think a lot of people really like these fish. So I'm going to be putting these in the 90 gallon. This is a group of fry, they're Blair Eye Fry. Trying to um, get more of those going because I really, really enjoy these fish. And like I said, they've been really popular. I can't seem to keep them in stock, so. Slow growing, I'm probably gonna start another batch soon. We bred two different kinds of garamis and it was probably some of the easiest breeding we've ever done. This is uh, my favorite garami, a pearl garami got a really cool video of, of this one breeding um, if you want to check out that YouTube short I have posted but we have just tons of fry in here and it was really cool to watch them lay these eggs and honestly they have been really good parents they've been really sweet to each other I haven't seen any aggression I haven't seen the dad eat any of the fry um, I'm putting brine shrimp in here every day and the fry are just gobbling it up so they're getting bigger and they like to stay towards the surface in the plants. But yeah, for the pro garamis and the opaline garamis, all I did was 80 degree water, super low flow, tons of plants. And um, I mean, it was as easy as throwing them in and they just did the rest. I didn't do anything. So there, there was a lot more fry in here. They're probably just all kind of like I mean, if you look around, there is a bunch of fry in here. There is a ton. They're just, I'm not feeding them right now, so they're not that active. Yeah, there's a proud daddy right there. These are the 24 karat gold guppies that were in that little mini pond um, that I did a video on. They, I did not feed these guppies for months. I didn't feed them the whole time they were out there. They must have been eating larva, uh, plant, you know, plant matter bugs so and they seem really healthy but I'm gonna deworm them I'm gonna treat them with some salt make sure that they're good before I start to breed them again for you know for you guys and then they have a bunch of fry up here and it's really interesting I don't have any plants in here but they're not eating their fry and when I kept them inside before they were notorious fry eaters like they would just gobble up their fry the second they came out but for some reason they're not doing that so I thought that was really interesting. You know, and these fry don't seem, you know, scared at all. They're just chilling. Maybe they'll get gobbled up later, I don't know. I'll probably throw some plants in here once I'm done treating it with meds. But uh, I want to make sure that they're good first. These are just some more Bosmani, the Rosario La Quartz uh, strain of Bosmani rainbow fish. And um, yeah, they're fry, so they're small, but they're growing. Rainbow fish definitely are uh, a fish of patience, but it's good. It helps me fight that instant gratification that we all kind of um, are drawn to, you know? Really slows you down and, and really makes you appreciate the fish when it gets full size. This 10 gallon is my emerald raspora colony. Got some nice fat and sassy mamas in here. All I feed them is brine shrimp. So they're always eating tons of brine shrimp. Uh, pretty shy fish, honestly. They always stay towards the back when I'm up here. But you can see that I've got some really nice looking males. 
Uh, the color on them is actually really, really nice. And I've got a bunch in here. I don't know if you can see. Next door are the CPDs I have for sale. I have about 10 of these. Maybe slightly more than 10 um, if you're interested. Got them on the website. I've come down a couple dollars in price for them. So they are, and they're, I mean, they're pretty full grown. So if you're looking for something where that you can start breeding right away, these will probably do it for you. And something smarter that I've done with my CPDs, I think, is uh, I've put all the ones I'm going to sell in one tank, and in another tank I have a breeding colony. I've selected the best of the best of the best and put them all in a breeding colony. And um, I try to do like an equal number of males and females. And what this does is it gives me a crap ton of eggs every day, like over 100 eggs every day. And um, it also, you know, helps me avoid selling out of fish because that's a very real concern when you only have one tank of fish and all of a sudden you start selling your breeders and then, oh man, I only got like five fish left. Now it's going to be forever until I have more. This, this helps me uh, maintain my, my population. And um, yeah, I just have... I actually have probably 10 more upstairs too, so I got a lot of these guys, but they're still one of my favorite fish. The color on them is just beautiful. You don't need to keep a heater in the tanks. They get down to like 66 in the winter and uh, they don't mind. If anything, I, I get even more eggs out of them, I feel like when they keep them cold. I just, I mean, they look like little trout. Just beautiful fish. And there's an, if you keep them in a large enough number, um, and you give them a little bit of hiding spots, they're really not that um, shy. Like, I'm right up next to the tank right now, and they're not shy at all. They're just doing their thing. Yeah, I just love these fish. They're just beautiful. And above them, I've got some babies, some more sticks. I don't know how many are in here. A decent amount. You know, not, I mean, not a ton, but... Definitely got some fry in there. Extremely, extremely small fry, but actually pretty easy to raise. I have to do a video on these. Not that I'm an expert by any means, but um, I've raised up quite a few, so I can at least show you how I do it. Next door is the other gourami that we bred. They're extremely blue, and uh, this is the second time we've bred them, and they are really, really easy to breed. Again, 80 degree water, lots of plant mass, and um, I just power fed them and yeah I've got quite a few fry in here uh, so much fry that I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these gouramis that might be the next giveaway we have uh, maybe when I hit 5,000 when I hit 5,000 subscribers if I ever hit that um, maybe one of the prizes will be uh, some gouramis because <laughs> I, I mean look how many are in there it's ridiculous You handsome devil, you. Down here we've got a uh, another batch of Philippine blue angelfish growing out. These guys are itty bitty, they're small. Just in a 10 gallon tank. But uh, so far they seem like a, they've got a really, really nice uh, group going. I don't see many that need to get cold yet. I usually wait a little longer till I start pulling them out anyway. You know, because I always like to give the runts a chance to grow up. If they don't, if they don't grow up, like see, this guy's kind of derpy. That guy's derpy. Uh, but yeah, they're looking really nice. Fun fact: I get this question all the time. They do not get the blue coloration till they're a little older. I'll oh, see. Here's a derpy one. Yeah, so he, he's gonna have to go to fishy heaven. That's a stinky thing about being an uh, angelfish breeder: is you gotta you gotta call a lot of fish, and that's not fun. But if you don't, you end up with hundreds of derpy fish. And um, yeah, it's just, if they get big enough and I don't catch them, I give them away to people. But I try to take care of them while they're still really little. Here's just a tank of White Cloud Mountain minnows that I bred um, a while ago. I've sold some of them, not all of them. And uh, I thought I wanted to get rid of them, but honestly, 
kind of fall in love with these guys again. They're just beautiful fish. And when they display, and they, they stick out these like yellowish tinged fins, they're really pretty. So I'm gonna keep some of them, I'm gonna sell some of them They're on my website. Probably lower, lower the price a little more. Uh, I've got a nice heap of uh, Christmas moss behind them. I'm sure they're dropping tons of eggs in here, but in my experience, they, they do eat their fry when you have a small container like this. In a pond setting, maybe they wouldn't. That's, fry, that's a fry right there on the, on the wall. This is my breeding group of Trifasciata Blythe River rainbow fish. Really, really pretty rainbow fish. Of course, none of my rainbows are gonna be firing up right now because it's late at night. These guys are awesome. They got like a really uh, fat body. Really dominant um, lateral stripe on them. Nice red coloration, nice purple head, uh, like breeding stripe. A little shy right now. Here are some of the juvies that I bred from the, that group. You can see some of these babies already have crazy color on them. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Like, look at this guy. I didn't know they got color that little, but uh, yeah, these guys I think are going to be ready to sell unsexed in groups of like maybe six or eight. Not really sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but if you guys are interested in picking up a, a group of these guys, I think these are about ready to sell. If you're interested, look out on the website for those. Here's my breeding group of Myrosai. This guy wants to show you his colors. I love, I love the hot pink color they turn when they're breeding. It's just insane. I've got a little too much, a little too many fish in here right now. I think I, I, I usually like to do in a, in a 20 gallon high, I like to do two males, four females. I feel like it's worked really well for me. I think I have three too many fish in here, something like that. My L181 um, peppermint plecos just gave me a second spawn of eggs, second batch of eggs, which really, really happy about. I've got um, two males and one female in there. This 20 gallon high has some um, Melatania myrosi juvies growing out, hatched the same exact day as those Blythe River, but these are uh, much slower growing in my experience. But yes, I have plenty of fry in that tank too. There's the Myrosai. Myrosai. Trifasciata Blythe River. And Trifasciata. Here's my original breeders, uh, Philippine Blue breeders. Ooh, this guy's getting kind of aggressive with me. Easy, pal. Yeah, these guys, when, when they're colored up, are just absolutely beautiful. They've given me a lot of really healthy fish. Uh, more L181s growing out in here. Okay, you guys look like you're gonna lay eggs soon. Hmm. Maybe I should put this slate in there. Um, this tank's just got some odds and ends. I think there's some Trifasciata and Myrosai in here. Mostly Trifasciata or the Blythe River. I do see some Myrosai too though. Uh, I'm not really worried about mixing them up. They look so different. I wouldn't have put them in the same tank if I thought I was going to mix them up. Got some random plecos donated from Steve. I believe he's got some calico bristle nose and I forget what the other ones are called now. I think I got three plecos in here. I'm going to have to move them. This next tank might be one of the most important tanks in the whole fish room. It is a group of Melatania Kelly Moisey, given to me as a gift from Steve again, which was very generous. And um, like an idiot, I didn't take uh, his veteran advice when he said to put a lid on the pond outside. I said, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, all five of my breeders jumped out that night. Super bummed about that. That was a hard lesson. I should have been so arrogant. I should have should have just listened to them. Luckily, I had a mop full of eggs, and um, definitely still have the species. So I'm gonna move these around, put them in a couple tanks so I don't lose this, the line because I really really like these. 
I don't know, they're not a very popular rainbow fish, I feel like. I mean, they're recently discovered. And um, for some reason, I don't know what it is. I just love that rusty orange color. You can see this guy's starting to get it. They get like this dark, rusty orange color on the back with like this gold in the front. Uh, I have to overlay a picture. Just absolutely pretty, very, very pretty rainbow. Um, and I'm very grateful that I had a mop of eggs. So I was able to save some fry. But if you're interested, I'm sure we'll be um, selling these as well. In this tank, I just have a bunch of L181 Peppermint Pleco Juvies growing out. Getting to the point where they're almost sellable size, some of them. Some of them are still itty bitty like this guy. He's still itty bitty. But they're just pretty. They're really pretty. This is my first spawn of Plecos ever. Um, was super rewarding. Super rewarding. Like, I, I had a great time breeding these. I think there's 53 of them, although someone's already bought and bought six of them. So, I don't know. There's less than 53 now. My math is not good. Sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll feed them so you can keep, see them come to the front. Yeah, just really pretty plecos. I think they're definitely popular for a reason. And look how pretty they are. They're just, they're just like super cute. You can see they're like in the back glass. Got some cherry shrimp in here. I want to just get a line of red shrimp going, so I threw them in here with the plecos, and um, we'll see what happens. I was kind of farting around with trying to breed cardinal tetras, and um, we were successful, but we only bred one cardinal tetra. <laughs> so, if I could do it again, I would, I would change some things that I did about it. But uh, it was still pretty cool to see a Cardinal Tetra Fry in the tank, so I removed him and we're growing him out. You know, maybe in the future I can try it again, maybe make a video out of it, but uh, it was definitely uh, probably the most difficult fish I've bred so far. And like I said, I didn't really do much. I gave them the right environment and they kind of did the rest, so I really can't even claim credit for this. It kind of naturally happened. Here's a new tank I set up for these yellow shrimp that uh, I got as a gift. My friend wants to remain anonymous, but uh, you know who you are, and I really appreciate this gesture. It was very, very nice. Uh, I did get shrimplets from them already once. This is their new home, so they're just adjusting to it right now, but I'm sure I'll see more shrimplets in the future. I just got some java moss in the middle, some inert aqua soil, because it's so old that I don't think it's you know, changing the parameters anymore. I just like the way it looks. And uh, just some absolutely beautiful shrimp. These raccoon tetras, the same friend who anonymous, anonymously gave me these uh, yellow shrimp, also gifted me these raccoon tetras, and they were actually a giveaway from Dan's Fish. Uh, I really, really want to breed these guys, and same thing, we I did actually breed them, and I got one fry. I think it's this guy up here. Yeah. So I had six fish, now I have seven fish. Um, somehow one fish remained in the uh, tank long enough to grow up where it didn't get eaten by the parents. So that was really cool. I only have like one dominant male. Uh, it's definitely a fish I want to breed, because look at that male, look how nice he looks. Yeah, they're just, they're beautiful. The colors on them are just magnificent. Um, I was collecting eggs from them, and I even hatched them out into fry, but they're just so tiny. I think they're probably a fry that needs to eat like four times a day, and I just wasn't able to do that, so I lost all the fry. But yeah, that's definitely that's definitely one fry that was that's a juvenile now that has raised up in this tank. So I know I can do it. I just need a little more time, and uh, hopefully I can start breeding these guys. That'd be really cool. This is a Blue Dream shrimp breeding tank. They're probably all on the sponge filter right now. I just moved these guys over, so this tank's still brand new. Excited to start seeing them breed too. This is another tank of L181 Peppermint Pleco babies. They're pretty small. Yeah, there's a, little, a couple little guys in there. They're tiny. 
I only got 17 out of this batch. So um, the egg started to fungus up underneath the dad. He was doing his best, but I ended up having to put them in a um, egg tumbler, which I've never done before. It actually worked really nice. These guys are tiny, so it's gonna be a while before they grow out. But yeah, very grateful for two spawns from the Element 181s. This is the no filter shrimp tank that also has Endler guppies in it. These are the Kamano Endler guppies. And there is just a crazy amount of shrimp in here. Um, just did a big water change on it. It always looks kind of murky and green in here, but um, there's definitely always lots of shrimp kind of just poking around, you know? Wild type shrimp. We've got some orange shrimp, some red shrimp, some really shrimp in here. All Neocaridina. But the more you look, the more you see. So plenty of shrimp in here. I'm always pulling from this tank just to kind of, I want to start putting shrimp in all my tanks. And then the, the guppies have done a really nice job of breeding too. I just pulled a bunch of them out and there's still a ton in here. So I'm sure they're eating some shrimp. I'm okay with that. It's probably a good food source for them. Oh, and a food I've been really, really liking so, so far. Um, I've been buying a lot of golden pearls from kensfish.com. So golden pearls comes in all different sizes. The five to 50 micron is so fine that It's like a really fine powder. It's just a super fine powder. It's perfect for like rainbow fry or any kind of small fry really. And I'll just take this, dab a little bit. You can see all my little babies. Give them just a little, little feeding. There go. So I remember we saw some rainbow fry in here earlier. So I'll just, gives you the perfect amount. I think I got this from Master Breeder Dean. I think I saw him do this in one of the videos and I was like, wow, that's really smart. So we'll give these rascals a little something to eat too. And it gives you like a really nice, uh, Thin coat of food. Oop, you're not supposed to touch the water with it. <laughs> Whoops. So if you're not familiar, you can buy um, golden pearls in like a powder form, and then I've also been buying it in the three to or the two to three hundred micron size, which is like slightly slightly larger. So when the fish start getting a little bit bigger, you can give them this. And then I get them the even bigger ones, the 500 to 800 micron, which I wish I could show you, but I must have used the rest of it. Got to order some tonight. But um, most fry and growing fish just absolutely devour this food. I haven't seen a, a fish that didn't like it yet. So this is probably going to be my go-to system for growing up fry, golden pearls. Uh, that with also a high-quality flake. And I'm always looking at different flakes and trying out different flakes. I really like the cool mysis, but I also really like this new life spectrum yeah real real decent ingredients and uh, lots of um, just whole protein lots of good stuff in this and the fish seem to really like it so this is probably gonna be my go-to flake this is what it looks like it's like a brownish color but uh, most fish like it you can crumble it up real small still like just loving um, bug bites haven't found a fish that doesn't like this and for my guppies, I've been feeding a lot of uh, the royal guppy. This, this stuff is really nice. It feeds really small. So, and it comes in a really convenient little shaker. So you can just give it like a little, one of those. You get these perfect little pellets that are just great for guppies. And you can see that we've got a lot of happy customers there. Let's see, we'll do a little more. So yeah, this is, and again, like really high quality ingredients. And I think it's small enough where the fry can start to nibble at it. Yeah, really, really good packaging, really good ingredients. I uh, really like this stuff I got on Amazon. 
This is my double 75 rack that I built. And down here is all of my Rosario Lacorte Bosmani uh, growing out. They're probably gonna outgrow this tank soon. I'm gonna have to start getting creative with where I put them. But uh, they've been pretty popular, honestly, on the website. Um, they, they're a really, really good line. Line bred by Rosario Lacorte to achieve the most orange coloration in the tail. And um, if you've seen mine adults upstairs, you, I mean, you'd believe it. It's they, they are extremely orange, very beautiful fish. Um, so these guys are definitely getting bigger, like definitely getting some one inch, one and a half inch size fish in here now. Unfortunately, these are the slowest rainbows uh, growth wise I have ever kept in my limited experience. They seem to grow very slow, but they are extremely worth it. So yeah, very prolific. I get tons of eggs out of my adults. So many eggs that I had to just <laughs> put them back in the display tank because I, I had more than I, than I could need. But yeah, just a 75 gallon tank full of rainbow fish. Who wouldn't love that? And then up here is a whole group of marble angel fish. We've got some black marble and some gold marble. Uh, came from the same parents. There was a black one and a gold one, and they bred and kind of threw both colors. They're in this awkward stage right now where they look kind of, kind of funny because I feel like the tops of their uh, dorsal fin isn't really pronounced yet, so they're kind of like in this awkward preteen stage. Very some of the opaline garamis growing out in here too. I mean, even at this really tiny size, they're all they're like extremely blue already. Oh, here's a nice size one. Very easy to sex, very easy to breed. So I've got, I think, a couple more on my website of, the, of these. And honestly, if you buy, if you buy two of them, I'll probably just throw the rest in. Cause yeah, we've got, we've got a few. But so yeah, guys, I don't have a ton of time. I gotta go feed the fish, and I gotta work tomorrow. Um, so I gotta get up pretty early. But I just wanted to show you kind of what I got going on down here. A little bit of a 2023 update. I've uh, been working my butt off just to keep these tanks looking decent and keeping the fish healthy. It's my main priority. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And until next time, take it easy.